Okay, continuing on with our chapter 14 practice problems, we're going to integrated uh, rate laws and um, half-lives. So let's go ahead and get started. We have the small constituent pan dissociating into a radical and NO2 in a first order reaction, which has a half-life of 32 minutes. Anytime you see half-life, immediately assume that you're going to be using the half-life equation to, to uh, calculate your K value. And here it says, what is the rate constant for the reaction? So, we have our half-life of 32 minutes, which we want to convert. We can keep it minutes, that'd be fine. Because the next question is asking in hours, so minutes is fine. Again, your half-life, uh, sorry, your um, rate constant can be in any um, unit, any time unit that you want, as long as you stay consistent. Your concentration, if there is concentration, must be always be molarity, but your time or your, yeah, your time could be seconds, minutes, hours, doesn't really matter. Okay, so it's a first order reaction, so we have T1 half is equal to 0 0.693 divided by K. So we have 32 minutes is equal to 0 0.693 divided by K, and we get a K value equal to Two point one seven times ten to the negative two minutes to the negative one. So units very very important. Okay, if the initial concentration of pan in the air is five point zero times ten to the fourteen molecules per liter molarity, what will the concentration uh, be at one point five hours? So we've got this as our a naught this as our time, although we need it in minutes, so it gives us 90 minutes. And we have our K value above. What we're looking for is A at 90 minutes. So we're going to use our integrated rate law equation. <clears throat> so anytime we have change in concentration over time, we're talking about integrated rate law. So we have ln a t is equal to negative k t plus ln a naught. We put in our values that we have. Our k value. Our time. Again, stay consistent with your units, and it doesn't matter what time unit you use for these. And then our concentration must be in molarity. Um, so we're in molecules per liter. We need to be in moles per liter. So we need to take our 5.0 times 10 to the 14 molecules per liter and we have 6.02 times 10 to 34 molecules per mole convert that out And we get 8.30 times 10 to the negative 10 molar. Solve this out. I'm doing over here. Okay. 
Okay, when we solve that out, we get a ln of at equal to negative 22.9. And then we take e to both sides. And we get a, a at time t equal to 1.18 times 10 to the negative 10 molar. Okay. We want to know how long it will take for 30% of the pan to decompose. So we started out with an A naught of 8.30 times 10 to the negative 10 molar. We want to know how long it would take for 30% of that to decompose. So when we have 70% of this. So our A at time T is equal to 8.30 times 10 to negative 10 molar times by 0 0.7, giving us 5.81 times 10 to the negative 10 molar. So that is our A at time T. And we want to solve for T. So we have ln 5.81 times 10 to the negative 10 molar is equal to negative 2.17 times 10 to the negative 2 minutes to the negative 1 times my, my T plus ln 8.30 times 10 to the negative 10 molar. So on the left side, we get negative 21.3 is equal to negative 2.17 times 10 to the negative 2. plus ln of 8.30 times 10 to the negative 10. And then when we solve for t, We get a value of 16.4 minutes, which makes sense. We haven't quite gotten rid of 50%, so we should be less than our half-life. Okay, let's try our next one. We have decomposition of dimethyl ether at 510 degrees being a first order process with a rate constant of this value right here. Okay, if the initial pressure of dimethyl ether is 135 torr, what is this pressure after 14, uh, 20 seconds, uh, 1,420 1, seconds. Okay, in this process, we've got an initial temperature, a rate constant, and a pressure. So, since we're talking about a gas, we should be thinking, Hivnert. Okay, we need to get a concentration. So remember that n divided by z, v would be molarity. So we have 135 torr. We need to convert that into atmospheres. Gives us 0 0.178 atmospheres. And let's start putting stuff in and solve. So we have 0 0.178 atmospheres is equal to n over v times by our r 0 0.08206. And 
and then times by our temperature, 510, which is 783 Kelvin. We solve, we get A N over V equal to 2.77 times 10 to the negative 3 molar. Okay. Now that we have our concentration, we can put this into our first order process. Um, <clears throat> and we're going to be solving basically for uh, A T. So we're going to say, okay, ln of AT is equal to our K value, negative. So we have 6.8 times 10 to the negative 4 seconds is minus 1, times by our time, 1420 seconds, plus ln, our initial concentration, which is this one right here, 2.77. Two point seven seven times ten to the negative three molar. Solve this out. We get Ln of A T is equal to negative 6.85. Take E to both sides. Get a concentration of 1.05 times 10 to the negative 3 molar. And then this can be placed back into Pivnert to solve for our pressure. So we want P is equal to 1.05 times 10 to the negative 3 molar times by 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres mole kelvin times by our temperature 783 kelvin we get a value of 0 0.0678 atmospheres or 6.78 times 10 to negative 2 atmospheres. We could then convert it to Tor if we so chose, but we do not have to. Okay, let's try another one. At the high temperature, or at high temperature, the decomposition of sulfur chloride vapor follows first order kinetics. So this is our reaction. The rate constant is 2.2 times 10 to the negative 5 at 320. What is the half life for the decomposition at this temperature? So we're using T1 half is equal to 0 0.693 divided by K. So we want to put that k value in to solve for our half-life time and we get 3.15 times 10 to the four seconds. Okay. We want to know how long it takes in hours for 75% of this substance to decompose. We don't have an initial concentration, so we'll say that our initial concentration is 100. And at time t is 25.
Right. Only use this if you don't have an initial concentration. If you do have an initial concentration, then you would times by 0.25%. Or 0.25. Okay. So we're going to put this all into our equation. Um, I'm actually going to real quick convert this into um, minutes. And then two hours. So this is 8.75 hours for our half life. Okay, so we're going to do ln 25 is equal to negative k 2.5. 2, 0 times 10 to the negative 5 seconds minus 1 times by t plus ln a naught this gives us 3.22 equal to negative 2.20 times 10 to the negative 5 time plus ln 100 is 4.61 combine get negative 1 1.3 9 equals negative 2.20 times 10 to the negative 5 seconds minus 1 times by t. And then divide both sides by negative 2.2 .2 times 10 to the negative 5. We get a time equal to 6.30 times 10. To the four seconds minus one or seconds and then convert that into hours this gives us 17.5 hours we compare that to our half-life of 8.75 hours that makes sense let's try another one Decomposition of nitrogen dioxide follows a second order rate law. The rate constant is 0.775 molar negative 1, seconds negative 1, at 320 degrees. We want to know what the half life of the decomposition of this is. So, of course, we're going to be using our half life equation for a second order process. So, T1 half is equal to. 1 over k a naught so t1 half is equal to 1 over our k value 0 0.775 times by our initial concentration 0 0.0100 molar we solve for that. We get a half life of 129 seconds. We want to know how long it takes for 75% of the NO2 to decompose. So again, um, we're left with 25.0%. We do have an initial concentration, so we're going to use that initial concentration and then figure out how much how much is left when we only have 25% remaining. So our A naught equals 0 0.0100 molar. Our AT 
equals 0 0.0100 molar times by 0 0.25, which gives us 0 0.00250 molar. Okay. Now we're going to put this into our second order half-life equation. Or sorry, second order integrated rate law. One divided by a t is equal to k t plus one divided by a naught. So we have one divided by 0 0.00250 molar is equal to our k value 0 0.775. times by t plus 1 divided by 0 0.0100 molar okay I'm going to combine my um, two molarities to get a 300 molar negative 1 is equal to 0 0.775 and then divide both, both sides by my k value and get a get a time of 387 seconds okay Now we want to know, with our initial concentration of 0 0.011 molar, what is the concentration after two hours? This must be right here. Okay. So again, we're using our integrated rate law. We just, at this point, are trying to solve for AT. So 1 over AT is equal to our K value, 0.775. times by our t with five hours we need to convert that into seconds it gives us 18,000 seconds and then add that to 1 over our initial concentration 0 0.0100 molar So for this, we get 1 over AT equaling 14,050 molar negative 1. And then we solve. For AT, I have 7.12 times 10 to the negative 5 molar. Okay. Lastly, we've got some data. Our last question. We've got some data. we got some rate laws. And we want to determine what our rate law is from these graphs and data. That is not overly important since we can't see it, but... We do have the graphs, and that's what's really important. So we want to determine our rate law. Um, we want to determine our rate constant with units, our A0, and our concentration of A at 45 seconds. So first thing we want to do is we want to look at these graphs. This is a graph that is linear. So it is a second-order process. So since we're dealing with one substance we have a rate law of rate is equal to k a squared remember that our integrated rate law is 1 over at equals 
kt plus 1 over a naught. So our k is our slope. So if we look, our slope is right here. So our k is equal to 11.96 molarity negative 1 seconds negative 1. Then we want to determine our a naught. Again, if we look at this, our a naught is one, or our a naught is one over a naught is our uh, y-intercept. So right here, so one over a naught is equal to ten. So our a naught is equal to zero point one zero zero molar. We could have also looked at the data right there. And we want to know what our concentration of A is at 45 seconds. So we're going to use our integrated rate law. Or we put in our K value. We put in 45 seconds. And we add it to that we get a 1 over a t equal to 548.2 Larry negative 1 And then we get an A at time t equal to 1.82 times 10 to negative 3 molar. Okay. That is everything for our integrated rate law. Problems that I have for you guys. Hopefully that helped.